is finally here. I'm home in Canada, I spent a good amount abroad this year and it's finally time to stay home and reflect on the way I operate. It's good to be home. There is this level of consistency that comes with it, like the garbage men that come every Tuesday morning between 8 and 10 a.m. and my favorite coffee mugs that are always there for me. I even stayed long enough this time to make friends with the same squirrel that comes every morning for breakfast. We genuinely became good friends, or I hope to think so, that it's not only because of the cleaned up high quality Costco nuts that she gets every morning for being cute. With this level of stability, I get to focus on being the productive version of myself. Someone that accomplishes a lot without getting into burnout territory and maintains the same pace and level of motivation to pursue my goals and dreams. I think I finally figured out after years of being a complete mess, trying to do everything and be everywhere all at once, how to do it all in a productive and sustainable way, to keep it all going and maintain a good level of happiness overall. I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect, but I think I'm on a good trajectory to find that delicate balance in life and maintain productivity. I'm going to tell you what worked for me in the recent times that changed the game for me. I feel much happier, less stressed, more fulfilled and having this clear understanding that the ship is sailing to its destination. It's in the middle of nowhere in the open ocean but it's sailing and that brings me to principle number one. Slowly is the fastest way. I used to feel bad about myself every time I would go slower and I don't remember a time in my life that I would not be striving to always go, 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 go as fast as I can, accomplish as much as I can per day. If I have exceeded my to-do list, I would be genuinely happy, which is amazing, but can I do it on a consistent basis? Can I do it every day? I cannot. And this is where the problem started. Um, I was feeling like I'm not doing enough. I'm doing all the things that I'm doing. And then comes the time when I don't have the same energy to do everything that I want to do. I started kind of glitching to a zone where I would have three days that I'm just laying in bed not being able to perform after I killed it for seven days in a row. It kind of brings me from highs to lows really fast and I would feel really bad about myself. And I found that being able to balance out my energy and work on myself that way um, actually brings me a lot more happiness and I'm a lot more productive consistently every day doing the things that I know I need to do and yeah so now every day I start with first getting energy into my system by doing things like sleeping a full night at least eight hours of sleep and then I try to do the things I love in the morning so I can sit around just drinking coffee, engaging with some wildlife in my balcony. Just, you know, doing whatever I want. I love reading, so I sit down for at least 30-40 minutes every day and I read in the morning to get me in the right mood to start my work day. I'm doing yoga, I am engaging with people I love. So yeah, just kind of making sure that I know what brings me energy and doing those things first before I start my day. And then I can start my day already feeling really uplifted and that really helps to maintain my energy levels throughout the day because I'm not consuming energy I don't have. I am in power. I know that I do have the energy to spend and that's how I go through my days now. 
So when I started working on this, I realized it's the same concept with finances. When we do have money, we can pay for the bill. And then when we don't have money, we kind of get into credits territory, meaning we're paying with credit cards and then we need to pay for them after, right? So we pay for them with interest. So that's exactly what happens with energy. When we don't have the energy, we borrow energy from ourselves, meaning using our willpower, pushing ourselves. And then we need to really have a long recovery, which is not ideal. Because who can afford to just lay low for three to five business days? No one. I don't know. Maybe there are some people that can do it and it works for them. I cannot do that. So that means I only can give the amount of energy that I have. And I'm not going in debt with myself uh, when it comes to energy. Also, I realized that being around people that have these rituals tuned naturally is really healing. I know I wasn't born this way to desire and to overachieve all the time. It is most likely a consequence of PTSD. There were periods in my life that required me to become this way to survive, but I came on the other side already and ready to let go. I usually allocate a good hour or an hour and a half in the morning before work to generate energy. As part of my morning rituals that bring me energy, I just like to sit by the window in the living room because it gets all the light in the morning. It really wakes me up. Sometimes I sketch or journal. I notice that I gravitate to journal only when I have some unresolved conflicts. I rarely journal when things go super well for me. I read some of my journals from last year and it felt like I was struggling more than I thought, but then I realized that I just rarely put on paper the successful moments. So this year I promised myself that I will acknowledge and celebrate all my wins and definitely record them in my books. I found that the hardest thing is to stay consistent with the new energy generating morning routine. I replaced my old reactive habits like checking my phone and injecting coffee first thing in the morning with those new rituals and my mind was freaking out for a solid week but then I started noticing how I'm not tired at all after working at my 9 to 5 around 7 to 8 hours every day and had the energy to continue working for another 4 to 6 hours even during the coldest and darkest month of the year. It felt like I cracked the code of how I can stretch my days and accomplish more without pushing myself to do things when I'm tired. I could only access this state when I understood principle number two. The compound effect is the key to large growth over time. It applies to mostly any aspect of life. If you haven't already, please read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He simplifies this principle very, very well and applies it to real life stories, comparing how people grow over time when they apply the compound effect principle and when they do not, and how one consistent action can change completely the direction of one's life. As I mentioned, my body and mind resisted the new changes in my daily habits in the beginning. 
I really didn't feel a lot of benefits after a week of implementing the new routines, but after months of slow mornings, practicing the generation of energy before I could spend it, finally revealed the benefits of the practice. Nothing happens overnight, but when it rains, it pours. This simple truth is so basic, but I guess it takes time to be aware of how it actually works in real life. Taking it step by step, pushing through the resistance, even two minutes of daily journaling and five minutes of daily yoga will do its service over time. Some days my resistance is stronger than me, and as soon as I open my eyes, I open my laptop and start working without attending to my needs first. Those days usually lead to an energy crush in the afternoon and to a foggy mind overall. Remember that the compound effect works both ways. Bad habits lead to poor life and good habits lead to a rich one in every aspect of living. I'm going to conclude here for today and come back next week with part two of the productivity series that I will be releasing part by part in the next few weeks. If you're interested in this type of content, give me a sign. Otherwise, I'll see you in a video soon. Sending you lots of positive energy. Ciao.